Hey everyone, welcome back to Painted. It is a gorgeous sunny Thursday finally. It was chilly and rainy for the last couple of days, so I'm happy to see some sun out. And I'm taking tomorrow off and spending the day with my son, who has been working like a maniac as well as an uh, essential worker. So I haven't seen much of him. Um, and I'm just gonna take a little time and spend some time with my kiddo. Today is, sorry, deep breath. Today is an instructional only video. Uh, I am a gilder. You probably, some of you may have seen some of my gilding videos before and I haven't done one for a while. Somebody messaged me and reminded me, hey, you're not doing any videos where you're doing gold leaf. So I thought I would do some of that. I'm gonna put my glasses back on because God knows I can't read anything. Hey, Maddie, nice to see you. Ooh, and I made my hair stick up weird. How nice of me. And we can all, we're all suffering from the gray root crowd. I've given up. Y'all can just stare at the top of my roots or look at what I'm painting because quite frankly, the painting's more interesting than my hair. Anyway, so here we are down here. I have a very large, and it goes, you can see it goes out of the frame. I have a large gold leafed old picture frame. So what happens is these old frames are, are, are gessoed and then they're water gilded with gold leaf and then they're, they're uh, patinaed. Um, and so when you get them, you might find that the corners are cracked or they have funny spots or chips out of them. And a lot of times I can rebuild the corners and I do that. I didn't feel like doing that in this one. This is, this is going to be more, um, what I call pleasure gilding because I love to gild. So what I'm going to do is be putting, um, where is it? Variegated green leaf. Now this is not true gold. It's a composition metal, meaning it's made out of brass and other tarnishable metals so that when you get that, they chemically or heat treat the leaf and it gives you different colors. Uh, I have, you know, I've worked with red, gold, yellow, blue, pink, patinas, you know, all these weird colors. And that's how you get them. Now understand that means that this doesn't get top coated because as soon as you put any top coat on these leaf, these kinds of leaf, it changes the color. Um, I've had beautiful leaf that was pink and fuchsia and stuff, and it was actually um, probably uh, heat treated copper. And as soon as I put a top coat on it, any top coat, water based, oil based, solvent based, or wax, I've tried everything I can get my hands on it changed the color and it all went orangey. So that's what happens with these kinds of leaf, just so that you know when we're starting out. And then the next thing to do is to apply the leaf and you need an appropriate adhesive. My go-to is Ducks Quick Size. This is oil-based, it's smelly. That doesn't bother me, I'm expe I expect it. It doesn't, the, f the smell doesn't bother me at all. And you want an oil-based size for this as opposed to water-based because A, once again, we're working with tarnishable metals. So water-based sizes, unless they've cured for quite a while, will still have moisture on it that can change this, but also they don't thin and they don't level. And that's what oil-based size does. So I'm gonna teach you the best way to apply it. It was taught to me uh, by Mickey Cavanaugh, who taught me at the Society of Gilders. Uh, Big thank you to Mickey for teaching me how to solve a problem I had. And I'm gonna zoom this in so you can see what I'm doing. So give me a minute to figure this one out. And then I gotta move this so that it's in the frame. Give me just a second, everybody. Right, there we go. I want the corner in the frame so you can see what I'm about to do. So this is my old can. You can see that it's hardened up, but underneath here, there's always good size until it's completely dried out. And I'm dipping my brush in and I keep oil brushes and water-based brushes separated. And I'm gonna brush. And I'm brushing thin and I'm stretching. I'm practically probably double sizing a spot that I did before, but oh well. And then this sets up in about 15, 20 minutes, hour maximum, depends on how thick it is, how heat, how hot it is, and how damp it is. And then you have a couple hours to work on it. That's why it's called uh, quick size. You've got about three hours of work time on it. it says on the back, 
uh, thoroughly clean and dry, smooth as possible. Uh, let's see. Will be ready to use in one to three hours, depending on the temperature of the proper tack. Um, 12 hour size is designed to stay open longer and uh, give you a longer working time so you can apply it you know, the night before and work on it all the next day. This will give me, this will set up in about an hour and then give me qu uh, several hours of work time. But it has a much shorter span. And you really have to try these things yourself to know how it's going to work. So you can see I'm putting it on generously in the corners. And this, this would be where it would take a minimum of three hours. But this is a trick that I got taught. With the same brush, you take it on paper towel and you squeeze all the size you can get out of it as clean as possible and the way to test is you go back and forth with your brush you want to make sure that nothing is coming off there and then you take this brush and you go back in and wipe off let's see if you can see that paper towel right there okay there's my paper towel right here so i'm going in the corners getting anything that might have been too heavy pulled in and then I'm wiping it back off down here. And so you can see it's depositing adhesive back onto the brush and then off on the paper towel. The thinner I can make this, the better the gold lays on it. And I'm not gonna do a whole bunch of this because I don't have time to do this whole frame tonight. And I have sized another part of it, so we're gonna flip it, flip it around. Hi, Sunita, nice to see you. And Maddie, thank you for sharing. All right. Sprinkling, we appreciate the love. So I'm just going back and brushing off all the X. You aren't even seeing it, I don't see it here. But what I am doing is until I can brush my brush clean, I'm going back and pulling it back off. A little piece of something stuck on there and especially important in these little crevices because this part could be easy to gild and smooth as could be, and this corner, because it wants to grab all the adhesive, will still be gooey and gummy, and then your adhesive wads up in the corners and looks like crap, um, or your leaf and your adhesive wad up in the colors and look like crap, and, and I know that's a very technical term, but that's really, that's what happens. And if you look at my paper, you can see I've taken, sorry, I'm trying to get it without the glare. I have taken off almost as much adhesive as I've put on. And this is oil based, like I said. So I keep a little jar, a little bit of mineral spirits in it right next to me. And if I needed to slow down my open time, keep it open a little longer, I could add a little mineral spirits to it. I think I'm trying to remember my brain is a little bit of guacamole right now, but mineral spirits is the solvent for this. So there you go. Now I have really worked and worked and worked this and gotten it as thin as possible. And I'll go back and finish that later. Now I'm gonna move all this away because I'm gonna flip the frame around and we'll work on the gilding techniques. Get my hands, get a little on my hands too. I'm going to have to get a little mineral spirits on my fingertips. So like I said, I keep a little mineral spirits around. And for those who don't know, your mineral spirits actually is recyclable. Um, if you get something that needs to be cleaned with mineral spirits, you let the jar sit. And if it's full of mineral spirits, after you've done all the cleaning, all the solids settle down to the bottom and you pour this back out through a cheesecloth and you still have a lot of really usable mineral spirits. So there's, there's the keeping it recycled and as much use tip of the day as I have. All right, so let me flip this around and we're gonna squeeze back out. There we go. All right, let me flip this around. Now, I did start this because that was where I tested my adhesive level. 
I'm knocking my cushions on the floor. Oh my God, I'm a disaster. And there's several ways of doing this. You can cut this up. You can use this with a gilder's tip, which is a very specialized brush. But there's another way that I learned at another, at another convention many years ago. Because with composition leaf, um, they're much bigger sheets than with real gold. So I take a book and I cut the end off. That leaves everything in between, sandwiched in between sheets here in the book. Although there might not be anything left in this one. I may have just cut apart an empty book. I'll show you how to do it with this one though. And then I'll open a new book. These were classroom books, so a lot of it got used in different times and places. All right, so I'm gonna lay that right back on there. And under, composition leaf is also heavier and thicker than real gold. So trust me when I tell you that the way I just picked up that leaf, you really can't do that with gold. So I like to sandwich it between the two pieces of paper just like this. And then I use the paper as something to hold on to the leaf while I guide it over the surface. And then I can push it with my fingers without touching the adhesive and ruining that. Now, I missed a whole big spot in here because of the bad way I did it, but I'm going back down under here. And if you've got very intricate detail, like we're going to deal with in this corner, um, and I might even do it just down the rest of this to show you how it works, is you can double your leaf. Okay, here's another book. Like I said, I don't know what's in most of these books because they were used in other classrooms, so they can get heavily used up. All right. So I've got one piece. Well, it looks, may have said green on the outside, but it looks pretty blue to me. And that's because it is blue. The blue one got put in with the green. Hang on. Another green one. Make sure I get the right color so they're all the same. Okay, so I'm cutting this apart. And unfortunately, the blue envelope, the blue leaf envelopes don't have a green lit front on them, so they look literally exactly like the green. Okay, so I'm gonna take this apart. I've got some torn up leaf in there. Actually, I might use that to fix this one spot. And unlike what other people deal with, my hands are super dry from all the years of painting. And so where everybody else worries about sweat on them, I worry about anything sticking so that I can actually use it. So I'm just double leafing that spot that was not grabbing properly before. And pulling off the extra. And I'll just set that aside for later. Now this is a very casual way of doing leaf. And by casual, I mean, I'm not using a gilder's tip. I'm not using a gilder's mop. I'm not being super precise. I'm not worrying how perfect I lay it. Because if this was gold, I'd be a lot more concerned about how I was applying. So I'm double leafing now so that I can get into, and that's what double leafing is. I put two sheets of leaf on there and then I'll just, let me get my brush. And if you don't have a gilder's mop, which many people don't, you can just use one of these little inexpensive rabbit fur brushes and I'm pushing it in. And what the, the reason that second leaf is there is the first leaf will crack as I'm tamping it down, as we saw happened right here. And the second leaf covers the spots and goes into where uh, I missed with the first piece because it cracked. So look, that just went on super nice. I should have pretty good coverage. Um, again, if you're concerned about changing the color at all on this, 
wear cotton gloves doing this. I can't do that. My hands are so dry. I don't leave oils behind. I usually am lucky if I manage to leave the gold behind. Okay, so here's this. And we're gonna plop that down. And then we're gonna take prefer to do this if I can get two pieces sandwiched in, but it takes forever to, to do that while somebody's watching. So I'll spare you all that. And again, this is double leafed. So I'm gonna go in here, tamp it down. Gilding is not a fast process. Hi Nasser, thank you for tuning in. Now understand, none of these products or anything I sell this, is, this video today is purely instructional on how to lay leaf and what products to use and what I recommend. Um, I've been a member of the Society of Gilders for a good decade or so now. I've been to several conventions, learned a lot from a lot of really, really gifted gilders. So if you're really into gilding, I'm going to tell you go to the Society of Gilders. They are wonderful. Uh, unfortunately, I missed last spring's convention because uh, I had just opened my business. But I'm hoping that the next one they have, I will be able to attend because it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I love learning new techniques, new products, new tips. Love all of it. I think once you stop learning, you stop growing. And I always want to be uh, expanding my knowledge of what I, what I like to do best. It's a little moisture on my fingers from grabbing something damp. And again, I'm just laying this down, tamping it down. So I always tell somebody when they're gilding picture frames and stuff, you're gonna use twice as much gold leaf as you think you are, period. Doesn't matter what you measure, doesn't matter. Unless you are the best, some of the best gilders in the world, which I am definitely not. I'm good, I'm not the best. Um, so unless you're one of the best, you definitely need to plan overage because you're gonna go through a lot. You just will. Uh, I love doing this. Now this, when you're working with leaf like this, and even more so when it's 20, uh, you know, 22K or 23 and a half karat gold, um, you have to be in a really calm state of mind because otherwise you'll blow this stuff all over the place. The last time anybody saw me doing a gilding video, I was gilding Buddha heads. Now this is this is probably more standard to what most people will use in their gilding life. And I've put adhesive along the back here. And I, what I want to do is I just want to get this corner, if it's dry enough, and I think it feels the tack feels good on it. Since that corner, I know is going to be too wet for me to work on for a while. So if you ever wondered why gilding was so expensive, it's stuff like this. It's the fact that you use more than you think you're gonna use. It's, it's a slower process, but it's so beautiful. And working with these metals, it's, it, it's just amazing to me. I just, I live for it. it just, it's, it's so luxurious feeling and very indulgent feeling, and I, I like that. All right, let's get some of this tap down. And then we're gonna kind of declutter some of this. I'm gonna start 
burnishing off the extra. I'm being careful because there is still a lot of places on here that I have a lot of foil adhe um, leaf adhesive and I don't want to ruin everything that I'm trying to make look great. So I'm just trying to pull all the skewings off into the middle. And yeah, I save all the skewings and stuff. Uh, let's see. I'm going to look up. I'm, I can vaguely read your question, Carrie. I will flip up as soon as I'm done with this. And you too, Gigi, I will look and see what you have to say and see if I can answer the questions. Um, right now, with all this leaf floating around here, uh, I need to kind of pay attention to what's right in front of me because, again... Once the size is on, once the gold's on, you're sort of on a time limit. Okay, that's where the, I stopped applying the size earlier. Now, normally, you don't size something like this in half areas. You, you're going to put it on, and you're going to gild the whole thing in one pass. Um, or you're going to be much more strategic in your application and do it that way. Um, neither of which I did. This was done during a demo, so, you know, I'll have to deal with what I have to deal with later. I'm not too concerned. I'm used to fixing things. That's what I do. So, I can see already, like, right along here, I missed with the size. So, I'm going to have to come back and brush size on again very carefully. And I will probably re-gild this whole top section right here so that it looks uniform. Like I said, it's a slow process and it requires patience. And if I'm being quick and sloppy, it is the kind of the price that I pay for what I just did. This is so pretty. I mean, Really, this is just beautiful. And I can see, you know, a very romantic painting in here. Or a beautiful still life. Yep. See, I did a poor job of getting some of the stuff in where I needed to. And uh, so later, I'll just have to redo it. take a little piece of cheesecloth and this this adhesive is not you know the foil size I mean the foil size I've been saying foil size so much lately I can't say gold leaf size so the gold leaf size is not completely a hundred percent dry even in the thinnest areas so I don't want to rub on this too hard because I can mar the finish so I'll let it dry overnight and then I can come back in and more aggressively clean in the little details. And I will come back and also work on the rest of this. But I mean, look, I mean, this is just, look how beautiful that is. See if I can get that to zoom a little bit. Ugh, wrong way with my hand. Look how beautiful that is. It's just, I'm so thrilled. And all this, bye-bye. There you go. But look how beautiful that pattern is and look how gorgeous that variegation is. Look at the gorgeous metal details in here. I love this. All right, so I think we, this was really meant to be a short one today. Um, I'm gonna clean up the mess I just made because I just cleaned up the whole area to show you this. 
and then uh oh do i use a burnishing tool not on this i'm going over foil uh, the oil base size i have an agate burnisher but the oil base size dries hard the agate burnisher is designed to burnish the gold leaf against the clay bowl underneath it um, and that's done with a water size. So it's a completely different application method and that's why you need the burnisher. If I bring a burnisher on here and I've tried it, all I do is scratch the leaf off of the adhesive. That's really what happens. But if I burnish it nicely with, when I'm doing water-based size, and I, I'm not good with water-based gilding for, for this kind of thing. I'm not, I'm not skilled at it, I'm self-taught. That's why I never show it. Um, my next job is to go and, um, sorry, uh, try to get this out so you're not staring just at my nose hairs. There we go. Um, I've tried to teach myself water gilding. I have all the formulas. I understand the principle, but really it's not the same as learning from somebody who really knows what they're doing. So that's one of my next, uh, teaching moments. Um, and this is, Gigi, this is really leaf. This is variegated. This one that we were using was green, but this envelope says blue. This is gold, variegated gold leaf, which is not, again, real gold. It is copper and brass and all these other metals mix, mixed together that are tarnishable so that when you apply heat or a chemical solution, it causes the patinas on it. Um, and it's one of, it's really fun, but it's much heavier, real gold comes in squares half, about half this size, like this, about three and a half by three and a half max, and much lighter, much thinner, very, very porous, um, much more expensive and covers much smaller uh, amount of square footage. So that's, that's the difference. And when you're using real gold, it go, generally is applied, I have done it over oil size like this many times and I love it. But if I was going and needed an agate burnisher, you're doing it with water-based gilding for picture frames and that sort of thing. So I hope that answered the question. Uh, yes, uh, you've had to use it a lot and those are so, those tiny are so expensive that's that's the point is that you're working the, t the the fact that it's tiny and so expensive is the fact that you're working with real precious metals as opposed to common composition metals that are found everywhere um that's why gilding is a challenging art because it's expensive i love doing it i'm one of the few i know who do it constantly um and i do it half the time i do it i do it for fun so i don't lose my skills uh i do a lot of vera glamise water gilding on glass and then reverse painting. And I've done some videos on that and that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. I've just got a full plate of stuff going on here and I'm trying to keep everybody interested with different projects. So I appreciate you stopping by, learning a little bit about gold leafing today. And again, uh, for any of my Society of Gilders friends who pop in and go, oh my God, what is she doing? I'm sorry. <laughs> There are very fine gilders. And I know when I do something like this, it's not always to high-end gilder standard, but it is this commercial gilding standard. So, like for picture frames, for oil gilding. Um, I don't know if I had made any sense with that last sentence. Did that make sense? I'm talking to myself an awful lot, and I know what I mean up here, but now I'm talking to you all, and maybe I need to be clearer with you. So anyway, if I didn't make anything clear, if you have any further questions, if you need, I will post my resources in this post for all my gold leaf supplies. Um, these are, like I said, these are not items that I carry. These are not things you can buy from me. This is strictly a technique and inspirational video, and I will be happy to share my sources. So everybody have a great Thursday. I have a girlfriend's co ha a cocktail hour coming soon. Um, and thank you, Barbara. Again, I'm always around. Don't hesitate to reach out. I am not one of those people who says, contact me, and then I never answer. I actually answer. So please, whatever you need, ask me. I'm here. I'll talk to you all later. Have a great Thursday. Bye.